Hello everyone and welcome to the next edition of our of the BioExcel webinar series. My name is Rosan Apostolov and I will be today's host. Today we will have a presentation of a new open source tool, CWExec, which allows you to run Camel Workflow language workflows on LSF. It will be presented by Ching De Wang. Uh, today we have as a co-host Michael Cruzo, which uh, many of you know as the co-founder and the leader of the CWL project. First, to let you know that this webinar is being recorded and we will upload the recording of this webinar to the BioExcel YouTube video channel and uh, you can share it later with your colleagues or friends if they have not been able to attend today's event. Just a, a few words about BioExcel for those of you who are not familiar with uh, our center. BioExcel is a center of excellence for computational biomolecular research. We are over two years old now and we work in three main directions. One is to improve the performance, efficiency and scalability of several important applications for molecular dynamic simulations such as Gromax, for docking and integrative modeling, Haddock and QMMM simulations, CPMD. Another main aspect of our work, and this is also the topic of today's webinar, is our work on uh, efficient workflow environments with associated data integration. And there we work with a number of platforms and CWL is one of the projects that uh, we have been working with and supporting. We also work a lot on training and providing consultancy to academia and also industry, examples such as pharma companies. We, we have a number of activities uh, centered around, a num uh, around several interest groups. Uh, one of the interest groups that might be of interest to you is the Workflows IG. You can find more information about them on our website and you can get in touch with us on uh, various platforms in the forums that we have. We have a chat channel. In the video channel you have uh, recordings of uh, our previous webinars and events. At the end of today's webinar we will have a questions and answers session where each of you can ask whatever questions you have in mind to Chingda. While the presentation is going, you can use the questions tab on the GoToWebinar control panel. And after the presentation, I will uh, let each of you speak directly to Chingda and ask your question. If you have problems with the audio, if you ha don't have a working microphone, I will read the question on your behalf. If you have any other follow-up questions or points that you would like to discuss, you can always go to our forums at ask.bioexcel.eu where we uh, will further follow up. And uh, with that is the small introduction that I gave. Now I would let uh, Michael Cruzo take over with hosting and presenting Chinda to the audience. Hi Michael, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Howdy, everybody. I'm really excited to be introducing a new vendor into the CWL ecosystem today. Uh, Chinda Wang, as we see here, has a lot of experience in software development and grid cluster and cloud. Um, and so when we saw their blog post from the LSF group about their experiencing experiences running CWL, uh, using Toil uh, last summer, uh, we were quite intrigued to read at the end that they were developing their own implementation directly on LSF. So, um, and this sort of deeper integration between a workflow language and a specific scheduler, hopefully yielding uh, special optimizations or just a better experience has always been something we've been anticipating and hopeful for as a project. So um, looking at the number of attendees, it looks like everybody else is quite interested. So I'll stop talking and let Chinda uh, continue with this presentation.
Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Rosen and uh, Michael, for your introduction. I'm very happy to have this opportunity to present to BioExcel users today. Uh, my topic is, uh, as Michael mentioned, the CWL Exec, a new open source tool to run CWL workflows uh, in LSF. Uh, can everyone hear me properly? Rosen or yeah, you sound great. Okay, thanks. So uh, before I start, maybe I can say a few more words about myself. Uh, so I'm the principal architect uh, at IBM, uh, working on IBM Spectrum LSF family of products. Uh, I have worked on a product called the uh, LSF Process Manager for many years. It is an uh, enterprise workflow software running on top of LSF. And uh, we have a lot of customers in the life science uh, vertical, so we know a lot of uh, use cases and requirements from life science. Hopefully, this uh, helps us to develop CWL Exec better for uh, life science users. Okay, uh, so because I'm going to make uh, many uh, forward-looking statements on our project and uh, roadmap. So I'm required to show this disclaimer. With that out of the way, um, here's agenda for today's presentation. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce IBM Spectrum LSF and the LSF Suite. Next, I will briefly go over common workflow language and its implementation. And uh, then I will cover CWL exec in detail and then talk a little bit about uh, what is ahead of our roadmap. So I, I, I know there are LSF users in today's uh, audience, but uh, many of you may not know or are not that familiar with LSF. Uh, IBM Spectrum LSF is a batch scheduler for the HPC environment. Um, so it is a workload management software that helps you to optimize your uh, computing resources, whether you have a small or large cluster. And uh, it uh, provides efficient scheduling and uh, also sharing policies uh, for a maximum job throughput. LSF also has a few add-on products uh, that helps you to improve the user experience and uh, provide additional functionalities. For example, uh, IBM Spectrum LSF Application Center uh, is a web-based user portal for users to submit and uh, monitor their workload. And, uh, Process Manager automates uh, workflows that runs on top of LSF. Uh, we also have other products to monitor your uh, cluster usage and uh, generate reports. So LSF together with these add-on products, uh, we package them into IBM Spectrum LSF suite. The, I should mention the LSF suite for HPC is available for free under the IBM Academic Initiative. So next I will uh, briefly go over common workflow language. Uh, as Rosen has said, uh, Michael Crusoe is the founder and uh, leader for the CWL project. And uh, he has done a BioExcel webinar before uh, covering CWL. Uh, hopefully you have attended his webinar or have watched the video. Uh, briefly, uh, as you know, uh, there are many open source workflow uh, tools available today. And uh, many of them are very widely used in life science. Uh, but uh, one issue with these tools is uh, each tool has its own specification or format for the workflow definition. So it becomes difficult for scientists and uh, users to 
share or collaborate on uh, designing the workflows. CWL is uh, an open standard developed by an informal and multi-vendor working group. It's uh, led by the community, and there are many participating organizations uh, in academic, research, and industry. Right? And uh, it uh, basically designs the CWL uh, specification in such a way that makes uh, the workflow definition portable and uh, scalable across uh, various software and hardware environments. So as long as the, uh, sub, uh, the open source software implements the support for the CWL and the conforms, uh, passes the conformance test, then uh, and the CWL workflows can run in, those run in these different software. And uh, if you have the same definition and the same input uh, parameters and data, then the result uh, is re repeatable. And also, uh, CWL workflows can run in different uh, computing environments, uh, such as running locally or in a cluster or on the cloud. And uh, CWL also has uh, prominence in mind, right? So you can always get the same result. Uh, so it becomes a documentation of your workflow. There are already uh, many implementations of CWL. Uh, on the right of this screen, uh, you can see a list of the softwares. I copied this from the uh, CWL website. And uh, I, it, I, if you check periodically, you can actually see uh, more and more uh, software implementing CWL. Under platform support, you can see uh, software is uh, supporting local execution or in HPC environments, uh, such as uh, Slurm, Grid Engine, and LSF. And uh, they can also run uh, on the cloud, uh, including AWS, Azure, and the Google Computing Platform, and so on. So as CWL grows in popularity, we have LSF users asking us to support running CWL workflows on LSF. And uh, even though there are already many open source implementations of running CWL workflows uh, on the uh, HPC environments or batch schedulers, uh, these integrations are often uh, generally relatively basic. So this is not just for LSF, it's more, it's pretty much uh, most uh, in batch schedulers. So they are usually limited to the simplest or the most common functionality. So you cannot take advantage of uh, some of the rich features from these batch schedulers. And uh, the implementation can be inefficient. I will talk about this later in more detail. And uh, they are often limited or no ongoing testing or enhancements, even though uh, these batch scheduler continue to uh, release new versions. And uh, there's uh, pretty much uh, just the best effort community support. So in order to overcome uh, these limitations, uh, we started working on this uh, new project we call CWL exec. And it will be an open source tool uh, to run for now uh, with LSF. And we will have tight integration with LSF. And it will be fully supported by IBM as long as you have LSF support. And we will leverage uh, many LSF features, such as uh, native container support, uh, to take advantage of the LSF features. Uh, the versions we are going to uh, support is CWL Draft 3 and uh, version 1.0. Uh, there will be a few exceptions. Uh, some of the features we may not support in the first uh, release. This includes the um, software requirement uh, expression tool, the include directive 
and the remote location in the file and the directory specifications. Uh, this uh, primary is due to the effort required. Uh, we can certainly add uh, them in CWL exec in a later phase. Uh, we actually looked at uh, all the CWL workflow definitions in the public repository, and we kind of find that these features are not that widely uh, used, so maybe uh, this will not have, uh, will not be a big limitation. Uh, CWL exec will require LSF version 10.103 or above. Uh, if you use LSF suite, uh, 10.2 community edition, then the LSF version inside will be sufficient. And I need to uh, point out that the uh, community edition for LSF suite is uh, free and uh, it's downloadable. Uh, down you can download it from IBM website. Uh, I should also point out uh, CWL exec will be a standalone package. So aside from the fact that you need LSF, it will not rely on any other IBM product. Um, so this makes it easier for people to uh, use it. We plan to release it, uh, release it in the second quarter uh, as part of LSF suite. We will put the source code on GitHub under Apache license. Uh, the source code will be written in Java. So here's a look at the CWL exec command line. Um, this is similar to CWL runner. And uh, we have uh, don't have a lot of options uh, like a CWL runner. It's uh, basically you provide the uh, CWL workflow definition file and uh, an input settings file. Then uh, this command will execute the workflow. The command line options are consistent with the uh, CWL uh, conformance test. So we can use this command uh, to run the conformance test. Uh, the parameters include uh, the output directory, uh, the working directory, and we have uh, a new parameter called exact config. Uh, that is, uh, I will talk about in more detail soon. And uh, when you run the CWL exec, uh, you will get a unique workflow ID, uh, which you can use later on to query the workflow status or to rerun the workflow. So now I'm going to talk about uh, more details of the features in CWL exec. Uh, I will talk about how we check job completion efficiently uh, with maximum parallelism, how we support uh, LSF submission options, uh, self-healing of workflows, Docker integration, cloud bursting, and I will also talk about how you rerun and interrupt uh, CWL workflow. So first, uh, efficient checking of job completion with maximum parallelism. Uh, like I mentioned, in the open source implementation, uh, often to check whether a job has completed, uh, the, implement, uh, the existing tool often use, uh, often just pull the status of the job periodically. For example, in LSF, there's a command called bjobs you can use to query the job detail and status. And uh, often it is used to, you use uh, run B jobs, say every 10 seconds to pull for the job status until the job finishes. This is uh, not efficient because first of all, uh, you can have up to 10 seconds delay. Uh, you don't get the job status in real time. And secondly, uh, if you have many workflows in the system and uh, many jobs, then running D jobs on these many jobs over and over can generate a lot of network traffic. Even though LSF can handle high volume of queries without problems, 
uh, these commands uh, can still generate a lot of network traffic, which can have in has an impact on your environment. So in CWL exec, uh, we use a command called bwait instead. Uh, this command was introduced in LSAF 10.102. Uh, basically, it awaits for the job completion through a callback or notification mechanism. So you can get the job status in real time without delay. And at the same time, you don't generate uh, those kind of uh, network traffic. And uh, we run bwait in a separate thread so that we can ensure we have the maximum parallelism. So on the screen, there's an example. Uh, in the beginning, you, uh, we have four jobs, J1, J2, J3, J4, which uh, don't have any dependencies. Uh, and potentially the first job, let's say it's a scatter job, you can have thousands of jobs uh, that can run immediately. So we will submit these four jobs uh, right away to LSF so that they can run concurrently in the cluster, um, depending on the capacity of the cluster, right? And uh, then uh, there's a job, J5, that uh, depends on the output from J1 and J2. So we will run B wait to wait for J1 and J2 to finish in a separate thread. As soon as J1 and J2 are finished, the bwait command will return and uh, the main thread will gather the notification and then start uh, the job J5. So same thing with uh, job J6. And uh, so in this way, we are, will be able to uh, check job completion efficiently and ensures the maximum parallelism. Uh, next, I will talk about how we support the LSF submission options. Uh, in, in LSF, there's, you use the command bsub to submit a batch job to LSF cluster. And uh, bsub has a lot of options, uh, dozens of options. And uh, our users pretty much consider it mandatory to be able to specify uh, these submission options when they run LSF, uh, run CWL workflows on LSF. Uh, some of the examples uh, for these submission options uh, say resource requirement. Um, in CWL specification, the resource requirement is limited to uh, CPU memory and the disk only. Uh, this is understandable because uh, CWL specification is supposed to be um, keep the flow definitions portable. They don't necessarily run on uh, LSF or any workload manager. They can run locally or on the cloud, right? So these kind of options, uh, workflow manager specific options uh, may not apply in other environments. So back to the resource requirement. Um, in LSF, uh, the resource requirement can be much more than uh, just the CPU memory and disk. Uh, for example, user can specify the preference on what types of hosts. Like, do you want hosts with the least load or more free slots? And uh, for parallel jobs, you may want to specify how these parallel jobs should span across multiple hosts. So a uh, user can specify very complex resource requirements to uh, match their job to the optimal compute hosts. And another uh, fundamental thing users want to specify is which queue they want to submit their jobs to. Uh, the queue can reflect uh, policies like uh, priorities and how groups of users should share the cluster and so on. And other options can be uh, what project, application profile, or whether a job should be runnable. And I, as I mentioned, um, the CWL workflow definition is supposed to be portable. 
So uh, in order to sum support these submission options while keeping the uh, workflow definitions portable, we uh, will introduce a separate configuration file that you can specify for the submission options when you run the CWL uh, workflow. So as shown here, we use the parameter exec config to specify this file, uh, which will be in JSON format. And uh, these LCF options can be specified at step level or workflow level. Uh, options at the workflow level applies to every step in the workflow. And uh, if an option, a, a same option is specified at a step level, then that uh, the one at the step level will overwrite uh, what's specified at the workflow level. And uh, on the right, there's an example. Uh, the user has specified a queue called high, and this will apply to every job in this workflow. And he has also specified that all the job, jobs should be runnable. And then uh, in the steps, uh, for example, main step one, the user again specifies the runnable to be false which overwrites the one at the workflow level. And uh, he also specified uh, the source requirement for this step, which uh, says what type of host he wants, and he prefer hosts with the least utilize CPU utilization. And also it will require 500 meg of memory, and uh, there's a requirement for swap memory and uh, temp space and so on. So he can uh, just uh, use this file when he runs the, uh, executes the CWL workflow. And currently we will support the queue project, uh, rerunnable application profile and the resource requirement, uh, these options uh, for when you execute the CWL workflow. And we can easily add more later on. So next I will talk about uh, self-healing of workflows. Um, what do I mean by self-healing? Uh, it really means uh, when a step fails in a workflow, we try to let the job recover itself without uh, user intervention. So we will do this in two parts. One is the rerunnable job. That is a feature from LSF. Uh, as long as you enable rerunnable, then when the execution host for the job goes down, LSF will rerun the job automatically on a different host. So the user doesn't have to worry about this part. And the second thing uh, is we will provide a custom post failure script. So if a job, when a job fails in a workflow, uh, often it is recoverable after you take some action. Um, ideally, you may want to have a script to check and fix the problem automatically whenever possible. Uh, then the script can requeue the job and let the workflow continue. For example, a job may fail due to insufficient memory. And uh, you can have a script that uh, detects the job failure reason then modify the job submission parameter to increase the memory requirement. Uh, you can do this through the dmod command in LSF and then requeue the job. Uh, there's a command called drequeue. And uh, then the job will uh, run again right, with uh, more memory and requirement. As we, you know, uh, it's uh, always very difficult to estimate a job's uh, memory requirement accurately. If you specify too high a requirement, then you may overuse your resources. So it's best that you make the best effort, um, best estimate. And then if occasionally the job fails, then this kind of script can uh, requeue the job and uh, you can, the job can still succeed. And uh, the script um, may potentially also just check a job's 
uh, log, and uh, if it can fix certain problems, then you can it can fix the problem and then rekill the job. And we will support uh, this kind of custom post failure script uh, and uh, through the exact config file we talked about before. And uh, on the right, there's an example. You can specify the path to the to your script, and you can specify a timeout value uh, in case the script is not run uh, written properly and it can run for a long time or even can run. And there, you can also specify how many times you want to retry. So when uh, if a user has configured the post failure script and then when the job fails, CWL exec will run the script. When it runs the script, it will pass the job ID, D sub command, and job command, all the necessary information to the script so that the script can do the check and take actions properly. If the script uh, runs successfully, then CWL exec will consider the job has been requeued and uh, it will go back to wait for the job to finish. If the script fails, then CWL exec will consider the job has really failed and then it will stop the workflow. So this makes it possible for the workflow to be self-healing as uh, much as possible. And hopefully this is a useful feature. And next I will talk about the Docker integration. Um, so CWL specification supports dockerized uh, jobs. And uh, there are some uh, security issues when you use a dockerized application. This is not specific to CWL, it's a generic issue, right? Uh, in, for you to run Docker jobs, in order to avoid the sudo, uh, often the users need to be placed in the Docker user group, and the Docker job will run as root. Uh, so these uh, Docker group members get uh, root equivalent privileges. This is not uh, really an issue when Docker is used to run services started by root, but uh, uh, it can be a potentially serious issue when end users are allowed to run arbitrary jobs, like in this kind of HPC environment. Uh, second issue is uh, many businesses often have concerns about users being able to arbitrarily using a container from external registries, such as the public uh, Docker Hub. There could be uh, concerns on security and provenance or auditability of these uh, Docker images. And uh, LSF has uh, integration with uh, containers, including Docker. Actually, LSF also uh, integrates with other container technologies like uh, Shifter, Singularity, and so on. And LSF addresses these security issues for Dockerized applications. First, uh, we let administrator to use uh, application profiles to configure Dockerized applications. Uh, application profiles are some configuration in LSF. They are used to define the common requirements and parameters for the same types of jobs. For example, uh, for a certain application, you may want to specify some common uh, requirements such as memory CPU limits, free post execution scripts, and so on. And for Docker applica Dockerized applications, uh, LSF administrator can have the ability to approve and configure what registries and what images can be used. And uh, he also has control on what Docker options that can be used through the application profiles. And LSF will start uh, those Docker containers as LSF administrator, uh, 
removing the need for all the HPC users to be in the Docker user group. So that means those end users never gain uh, elevated privilege. So you, the only user ID you need to put in the Docker user group is the ILSAF administrator. Now of course, you, there's a configuration that you can specify a different user ID to start the Docker jobs. So this diagram basically illustrates uh, the points I've just mentioned. Uh, the administrator will be able to manage uh, what registries and images can be used through the application profile, which is defined in the lc.applications file. And the user just needs to specify a dash app, which means uh, what application profile I want to use. And LSF will then pull the image and run the Docker job. So uh, regarding the CWL exec integration, uh, we allow the administrator, uh, we expect the administrator to configure the application profiles for the Docker jobs. Uh, typically, we, for now, we expect uh, one profile per registry. So here in the configuration, there's a line container which uh, specifies which images can be used. So in this uh, example, the administrator has specified the key.io as the registry and the image name is passed in through an environment variable called the LSB container image. So this will be passed in when user actually CWL exec runs the B sub command. And this uh, pretty much limits the Docker images have to come from uh, the registry key.io. And uh, in the Docker options, the user has, uh, the administrator has uh, specified a script and uh, it's, uh, they, he can specify hard code Docker options, but uh, LSF provides the flexibility to use the script to generate the Docker options. So we have a sample script here. Basically, you pass in uh, multiple Docker options through the LSB container options in one variable. And uh, the last parameter is the starter, which is the user ID who will start the Docker job. After the administrator configures these application profiles, uh, the user just needs to specify this application profile uh, in the exact config for um, the Docker job in his uh, CWL workflow definition. He just needs to make sure uh, the registry matches um, matches the application profile. And uh, CWL will then uh, submit the Docker job and automatically pass in the image name and uh, Docker options such as volumes uh, because the CWL exec knows what the work directory or output directory and other temporary directory potentially um, to be mounted for the Docker. So this way, uh, it uh, should be pretty simple for the administrator to configure and the end user doesn't need to know all these details. He just need to specify the uh, correct application profile. And uh, this makes it uh, more secure to use Docker jobs. And uh, the next feature I'm going to talk about is the, is the cloud bursting capability from uh, LSF. So LSF has a component called the resource connector that adds the cloud bursting capability to LSF. This will enable LSF to automatically uh, launch, borrow and uh, launch host from a cloud provider to join the cluster when the workload demand is high in the LSF cluster. 
So the cloud provider we support include uh, AWS, IBM Cloud, Microsoft Azure, Google Computing Cloud, uh, pretty much all the main cloud providers. And uh, the resource connector is able to automatically flex resources up and down based on the workload in your cluster. So when the workload is high, it will borrow resources from the cloud provider to join the cluster. And uh, when the workload goes down, the, uh, these borrowed hosts become idle for a certain amount of time. The resource connector will return, uh, return these hosts to the cloud provider. So this uh, pretty much uh, you will be able to leverage the on-demand uh, capability from the cloud infrastructure to borrow resources as ma many as you want, as you need, and uh, you will be able to only pay for what you use. And uh, the resource connector also has policies for you to configure when you want to start boosting and uh, also, for example, the maximum number of hosts you can borrow, and so on. So this is mainly the configuration effort by the administrator. The end user just uh, need to specify the queue or resource requirement to be able to um, borrow resources from the cloud. And uh, in this way, uh, seed real workflows can run in the cloud when your on-prem cluster does not have enough uh, resources. So finally, I will uh, talk about um, the rerun and the interruption. Uh, so if a workflow fails, uh, exits with a non-zero code because um, some jobs has failed, you can rerun the flow uh, through the CWL exec command with the rerun option. And the rerun will start from the failed steps, uh, not from the beginning, because uh, users don't, a workflow can be long running and has hundreds of steps. The user don't want to rerun the flow from the beginning. Usually you only want to rerun from failed steps. And uh, also, uh, you can interrupt a uh, running CWL workflow uh, by pressing Control C. Uh, then CWL exec will uh, stop. Submit. It will not sub submit new jobs, and although it will let the submitted jobs to continue to run. So this is uh, all the features I want I want to cover. And uh, next, I uh, just uh, want to talk about uh, our roadmap uh, looking ahead. So uh, the previous slides basically talked about how you use uh, CW exec to execute a CW workflow. It is uh, pretty much in the CRI mode. We will add a server mode to CWL exec, and the server will run as a web server that provides a RESTful API endpoint. In the server mode, uh, it pretty much acts as a central server to um, execute and manage flows from many users, and uh, it will be a central place to manage all the flows and you can uh, achieve scalability and so on. And the RESTful API will include uh, the APIs to execute, execute a CWL workflow or get a list of the finished and uh, running workflows uh, optionally with the filter. You can also use API to query details of a specific workflow like uh, the details of each step and so on. We will also provide the APIs to control CW workflows, uh, including queue, suspend, resume, or rerun a workflow. And uh, we intend to include the server mode in the open source project. And uh, use the CW exec uh, server mode as backend 
we will also implement a GUI interface for CWL workflows. And the GUI will be done in IBM Spectrum LSF Application Center. The GUI will provide an integrated environment for users to uh, visualize, manage, and monitor all the workflows. So the abilities include uh, manage the CWL workflow definitions, visualize the definitions and the expenses, the running expenses. So visualization uh, will be similar to uh, the CWL viewer uh, implemented by University of Manchester. And uh, you can also monitor the progress of the workflow instance visually. Uh, and additionally, you will be able to select uh, input and output data and uh, view its content, as well as the work directory of the workflow instances and jobs. And uh, the, in this uh, single integrated environment, you can also control the workflow instances. Uh, you can select the workflow instance to kill, suspend, resume, or rerun. Uh, many of these uh, capabilities are implemented in the uh, LSF process manager. We are just going to uh, port or migrate many functionality functionalities to support the CWL workflow. So these are illustration of these abilities. Uh, this is the LSF Application Center. So you will be able to see a list of the CWL workflow definitions, all the definitions in your system. And you can pick uh, one of them and say, I want to view its uh, graph. Then we will show a chart to similar to CWL viewer. And you will see all the steps and their relationships. And if there are subflows, you can select it and then expand or drill into its details. And you can also select a workflow definition and then execute it by providing an input, input settings file. After the flows are running, you can have a list of all the running workflows. And then you can select, uh, say, one of them and say, I want to see its chart. And then we will show the progress of this uh, workflow instance. And uh, the status of the steps will be shown in the graph through color-coded uh, states. Uh, so in this example, uh, the color gray indicates that step has finished. Uh, green means the step is running, and the yellow means the step has not started yet. And uh, you can also click on the input or output file and then say, uh, I want to tail or view the content. And you can actually, when you tail, you can gather the content at real time. So this is uh, pretty much our roadmap. And I have, I think, uh, coming to the end of the presentation. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining the webinar. And uh, you are encouraged to download and try uh, CWL exec uh, when it's available in second quarter. And uh, you, uh, we are always welcome collaboration and contribution from you. If you want to be uh, informed of further developments, uh, feel free to just uh, drop me an email. And you can also just uh, give me feedback. So I think uh, that's the end of my presentation. And I will be open for questions. Thank you. Gina, thank you so much. It's uh, really exciting to see what you've accomplished so far and your vision for the future. Um, so I just want to invite everybody to send in any questions you may have. We've got some time set aside for this. We had one question already. Um, it's a kind of straightforward one, asking if there's going to be a recording of this talk available. And yes, the re a recording is being made. And uh, hopefully in a couple of days, it will be public. 
Um, in fact, there'll be another opportunity to ask questions in a sort of virtual face-to-face -face format next week at the CWL community call, which will be on Tuesday um, at, uh, let me get the time zones right, because we're also gonna do a little bit, a half hour earlier than we normally do. So it will be Tuesday at uh, 1500 uh, UTC. And the email about that will go out to the CWL community mailing list. So uh, great time for, for questions. Let's see here if there's any others available yet. Yeah, I had a, a question for you. Um, have you tested the CWL exec with any of the publicly available CWL workflows? Uh, that's our plan. Uh, actually, we looked at uh, the CWL definitions available on the um, public website, and uh, we have picked a few to want to make sure it can run with our tool. Great. All right. Um, all right. So um, Maxine uh, Sherman Yetru writes, uh, will the slides be shared? Yeah, this slide will be shared. I think uh, it will be downloadable from the um, file Excel website. Great. And we've got a question here from Pardon me, I'm new to this interface. Well, it looks like somebody unmuted me. Am I speaking now? Um, okay, I guess my question is, if we have not yet upgraded to uh, 10.1.0.3, how can we use CWL exec? Okay, yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, we uh, need the B weight. Uh, B weight is actually on 10.1.0.2, so if you have 10.1.0.2, then majority of the functionalities should work. Uh, we need a 10.1.0.3 mainly for the uh, Docker options. Uh, to support a script for the Docker options. And of course, um, for LSF, uh, if you have the LSF, the upgrade is always uh, available. And, uh, okay, so if we, uh, if we are not looking at using the containerization right off the bat, and if we are able to implement our own bWait command, will that work, or is it using bWait through some kind of Java API? Uh, if you implement bWait, it should work. Uh, but uh, make sure it actually, uh, we basically do bWait-w and uh, the list of job IDs um, mm -hmm. and the relationship for now. So if you okay. satisfy that, then it can work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't something we're hoping to do long term, but just until we get that upgrade, if we want to try things out, theoretically, if we write our own bWait command, it should be able to find it in the path and then work, correct? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. So, Michael, actually, I can read the questions. So, maybe right. I will... uh, sorry, my, my DM rebooted. And so, yeah. thanks for doing that. Uh, um, no problem. So, I will just go on to the next question. Yeah, from Igor yeah. Kozin. Yeah. So, the question is uh, Is PAC needed for Docker integration or is it uh, integrates directly into LSF? So, the answer is it integrates directly into LSF. So, you don't need to uh, have PAC. Igor, you'll need to speak up a bit. We can't hear you. Igor, I can't, yeah, uh, Igor doesn't have a mic. Igor, if you'd like to respond in the chat, uh, 
uh, or ask another question to, to reply. Okay, he's good. Thank you, Igor, for your question. So we've got the next question is from Manabu Ishii. Are features like post failure script, are they valid? Uh, would they be seen as valid by the schema salad tool? Um, I think I, I can answer that one. So the post failure script as shown in the example Manabu was in that external configuration file that's passed in separately. So it's not part of the CWL description. Um, if it was implemented as an extension to the spec, which uh, is totally allowable, and that was supported by CWL exec, then schema salad tool would be fine with it, as long as it had a namespace and a schema specified, just like other extensions. Manabu, does that answer your question? Uh, thank you. Uh, I understand a lot. Thanks. Any other questions? Uh, we can wait another minute for the questions to see if anybody else has anything. You said, um, Shinda, that your life science customers had asked for CWL support. Did you have interest from customers in other segments? Uh, for now, uh, I'm only aware of customers from life science. I think uh, CWL is, uh, I know it uh, probably has already expanded beyond, beyond the life science, uh, but uh, from our customer, uh, mainly they still come from life science. Great. So uh, in your Docker integration with the Dash app support, um, uh, so that means that Docker containers can only be specified by this sort of parallel configuration. Uh, is that correct? Or will you be able to translate CWL's Docker requirements uh, uh, actually, and see if they're supported? Yeah, that's a good point. Actually, uh, we have a fallback. So if you don't specify the application profile, we will just assume the user is in the Docker user group and we will run the Docker run directly. Okay. Um, and then there's a technology called uDocker that kind of gives a, a fake Docker experience. Um, and we've had success using it on LSF at the European Bioinformatics Institute. Um, have you, has your team played with uDocker yet? Uh, we haven't looked at it yet. Yeah, sounds uh, yeah, very that, interesting. Yeah, it's uh, in the reference runner. Uh, if you want to take a look at that, and that flows yeah. into your tutorial. Yeah. Yeah, we will have a look. We've got a few more minutes. Um, one more minute for questions. If anybody else has any. Well, if nobody else has questions, I just want to take another opportunity to thank you again, Chinda. I am really excited to play with this myself. Uh, I know a lot of customers and users out there are as well. So Q2 can't come soon enough. <laughs> thank you, Michael, as well. Well, that's all for now. Uh, so look forward to, on the BioXL mailing list and the website for the recording of this webinar. And again, we'll be emailing shortly on the CWL community group about uh, uh, a, another Q&A session as part of the CWL community call next Tuesday. Take care all. Cheers. Thank you.
side. 